everyone, thank you for watching once again. Sunridge of Nevada, Bruce Lofson, LCSW, coming back at you with another video. The wrapper I'm going to do today is XXX, I'll make sure I'm saying this correctly, Ten Tacion. And he put out an album called Seventeen. And there's so much to discuss on this album that I'm going to break it down. And it's probably going to be a three parter because it's so much, it's so rich and so many complexities from a clinical basis, musical basis, emotional basis reality basis, and how you, the fans, are enjoying his music, which is literally blown up, literally. Let's discuss the album, which has blown up uh, since it was released only several weeks ago. The album, again, and all the critics are talking about this, the album experience with a variety of genres, such as emo, indie rock, and again, that lo-fi. So he does take from different people. What's interesting here, and I want to show this because I can, um, let me get a little close. If you see the picture right here, this tends to be on the background of every song that he sings, which is three shots, one, two, three, Polaroids, and then like what we would call in the field, clinical social workers, logs. Logs about how you feel about yourself. The background, let me get a little close again, for those that don't have or haven't seen it, it's just writings, and the writings are very depressive. There's no end, you must be numb, there's a picture of a noose, I gotta be honest, after working in psych hospitals most of my life, he's not that far off. Um, people do do a lot of logging, especially on the kids' side. They always tell you, work on your log, you know, do your daily log, get your thoughts up, get your feelings. And I've read logs that have gone on for literally an entire notebook of kids talking about being depressed, angry, self-loathing, being abused, what it did to them. Then they draw pictures. Oh, do they like to draw pictures? And they're very descriptive pictures of being sexually offended, physically abused seeing their mother being hit, going through the ravages of drug withdrawal, of being on drugs, seeing friends shot, describing gang situations. I've seen it all. And the pictures of people going like this, or like this, or like, you know, going fetal, I've had that happen to me dozens of times. So that's not even weird or strange to me. That's actually a pretty normal situation to be through. This album, he explains, this is not his first album, but he did an album called um, Revenge, and Members Only, Volume 3, and he said, this album was different from his previous works, because you listen to me to get hype or to not think, don't buy this album. This one's for depression, for the depressed ones, for the lost ones. So he's saying very clearly, what I'm making is for you guys to understand, those of you, of my fans, that have these issues, this is the album I made specifically and expressly for you. So if you got the depression, the PTSD, the OCD, the anxiety, boom, you're going to have a lot of songs relating to you. And he releases it. Now, this is the other thing interesting, too. Not a long one. Barely constituted as an LP. It clocks in a little bit of 22 minutes. And 11 tracks long, nothing longer than, the, than three minutes, which breaks all the genres of conventional music, which usually is you have to have a song lasting three minutes. That's always been like the, the, uh, the Bible of any kind of music. A song must be three minutes to be commercially viable on radio. So, you get, again, that emo, that indie rock, and you have that crossover, which he does so well. Now, what he, the lyrics, which I'm going to go into in a second, are based upon several themes. Depress, depressing themes. Suicide, failed relationships, and infidelity. It also focuses on issues in Triple X's life, and involves a lot of internal dialogue. There's In the past, for those of you that are watching my videos, and the videos that we've done, we've broken down songs in depth because we had like a richness to go through. There's no confusion here on how he feels. He's telling you exactly how he feels. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of like gloss over the points that I feel are important and go through all 11 songs on the album and just go from there. Here we go. The first one is called The Explanation. What I thought was brilliant, if nothing else I would have liked, I love the fact that he took the time to say, this is who I am. This is what you're getting. If you listen to this album, this is me. So uh, you are literally, and I cannot stress this enough, literally entering my mind. And there's no rap. It's just him talking. And as he has the courage of his convictions that because of what I'm going to say is going to be so engrossing, I'm going to bring you in. And you're going to like what I have to say for the other 10 tracks. So... Again, almost every one of the songs has it where you see again the three pictures, click, 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 the three Polaroids, 
and the person, you know, people in there like this, like this, like this, and you see the logs on the back of it. And he's kind of saying to you, this is who I am, and this is my life from the juvenile detention center for being in prison. This is my thoughts and who I am. This is what you're getting. I mean, I got that concept pretty quickly, and that was the same theme that he's hammering home every single song. So the first, the first um, paragraph, my collection of nightmares, thoughts, and real-life situations I've lived, 17 is the number tattooed on my head. I looked around for that answer, and I, the answer I got was he didn't think he was going to live past 17, so he put 17 on his head to say, wow, I've actually hit that milestone. He felt his life was not going to be a very long life. Um, and he's not willing to accept my emotion to hear my words. So he wants entering my mind. So almost like eep, opening up, want you to peek inside, hear me, hear my words for, fully, hear me and listen to you. I value your acceptance and loyalty. Here is my pain and thoughts put into words. For many teens, it's a very hard thing to do. That, you know, here is my pain and thoughts put into words. Because teens are so much are often like, you know, like this. Boom, you know, boom. Hear no evil, speak no evil, say no evil. And they don't say anything. And for him to say that is an opening the door for people to go on this journey of depression and anxiety and unhappiness with X. And at least numb your depression. I love you. Thank you for listening. If you see where I'm coming from, maybe it will also help you. Thank you for listening. Sit back and enjoy the show, which has been used before in music before. Welcome back, my friends, to the song that never ends. And then, you know, just thank you for listening. You know, sit back and enjoy the show. What you're about to experience, here it comes. So clearly he's talking and not rapping. He's also opening himself up. This is a new way of explaining emotions and how the rest of the album will play out. You are drawn in to listen, and what happens the rest of the way to hear what goes on. You're on a journey now. And there is no end to the pain. You must be numb, and you picture him in that corner, and that's how he views himself. It's self-awareness, self self-exposure. Now, then there's another song, Jocelyn Flores. Again, pictures and the logs in the background. What he does here is a slow back and forth. I know you so well, so well, very slow. It's meant, though, to get you into the mood to listen. It's almost hypnotic. That's what he's doing. And then he starts talking, and he goes, I know you somewhere, somewhere, dreamy, like it's coming from the mind. I've been stuck thinking about her. I can't hold back. And then, boom. I'm in pain, want to put 10 shots in my brain, obviously self-explanatory, and then having conversations about my haste decisions. Quick, 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 quick. Staccato. Boom. And then PTSD got me messed up and been messed up since they, put, since they locked me up. But it's that quickness, quickness, quickness. And then he's talking about how we got to this level. I'd be feeling pain. I'd be feeling pain just to hold on. And I don't feel the same, I'm so numb. What's the effect, effect of depression? You slow down. So those four work, those four lines, I'd be feeling pain, I'd be feeling pain, I don't feel the same, I'm so numb. Again, the repetitiveness, that's depression. I'm numb. The world's going on around me, I barely notice. My house is on fire, my hair is on fire. I don't notice, I'm numb. I'm numb to the world around me, that's depression. And then the last part, I know you so well, I mean, I can do anything that he can, I've been pretty. I was telling someone, it's almost like music from the 40s. I know you so well, very different. Willing to experiment and take chances, but the way he did it was so creative and so original, you gotta give a guy credit for, for taking chances and how he put the music together. Next one, again, opening up. Depression, obsession, pretty self-explanatory. Pictures in the logs in the background. And he's talking about, and here he opens up with a guitar. You know, a single guitar, singing over the guitar. Guitar solo, it's stripped very bare. And it's the only instrument on this whole song. And depression and obsession doesn't mix well. I poison my body, doesn't feel well. Talking about depression and obsession almost going hand in hand. And often they do. We get depressed a lot of times when we want something that we can't have, where it's out of our reach, where we can't grab it, we can't hold it, where love is beyond us, forgetting it. 
Many of the fans that were writing comments about this song talked about their own personal issues with relationships and not being able to find someone and being lonely and being unhappy. And he captures that. And let our lips do all the talking, now I'm hooked. And depression and obsession doesn't mix well. I'm just obsessed with you. That's what he's describing what your first love is like. When you're all cuckoo and crazy, hormones yeah, yeah, off the charts, and you're not thinking rationally. I get it. But that guitar, he's very good at doing things where it's just you're forced to be focused on him and his lyrics more than anything else. Next one. Everybody dies in their nightmares. Now, again, you got the picture in logs, but what you have also is you have a child uh, staring up at a black mountain under white letters. And this is the only song I thought was a traditional rap song because it says, don't go, don't go to sleep, don't go, stay up and don't go. And then tired of feeling I'm trapped in my damn mind. And then, whoosh, damn mind, damn lie, damn game, nighttime. Only time I feel pain when I'm in love. That's why it's tatted on my face that I'm damn numb. When, I, when, I feel, when I'm feeling something, when I'm feeling emotions, and that's why I'm never alone. I've been feeling lost. I don't go outside. I'm trapped in my mind, lie, damn game, nighttime. And that's repeated. My damn mind. I'm wrapped in a damn lie, a damn game, die in the nighttime. And that's repeated again and again and again. And we've talked about this before. Four-line sequence. Tired of feeling like I'm trapped in my damn mind. Tired of feeling like I'm trapped in a damn lie. Tired of feeling like my life is a damn game. Uh, really, you know, want to die in the nighttime. N word there. What do we get though? Four lines, four lines, four lines, three lines. Then he goes three lines and three lines. Don't go to sleep. He's making his point, talking about a relationship. And then as he's, as he's ending, don't go, don't go to sleep. Don't go, step, don't go to sleep. And suddenly, what's he talking about? Having to deal with his dreams. All of a sudden, you, you know, you don't go to sleep, don't go to sleep, because all of a sudden now I'm alone, I got to deal with things on my level, and it's scary. Next one, revenge. Pictures in the logs, it hasn't changed the entire album. Goes with the guitar. I think, I think I finally found a way to forgive myself. He's talking it out quietly. For mistakes I made in my past, I think that's the first step, right? You agree? Background singing. He goes like this. If I can act on my revenge and oh would I, some kill, some steal, some break your heart. You thought that I would let it go and let you walk. Well, broken hearts break bones, so break up fast. I don't want to let it go, so in my grave I'll rot. I dug too grave for us, my dear. Can't pretend I was perfect, leaving you in fear. Oh man, what a world of things I hear. If I can act on my revenge and oh would I. I believe he's talking about himself. That he didn't take care of himself. I did not take care of you, meaning... He never got the chance to be himself. I did not take care of you. This is always like talking in his past tense. And it's very drawn out. Because the end of the song is, In my grave I'll rot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven lines of that. In my grave I'll rot. I'll rot, I'll rot. Is my pain your freedom? Is all of my pain your freedom and joy? Fade out. I believe he's talking about not getting his own needs met emotionally. And that's where he's coming from. Then he has a song afterwards called Save Me. And he go piano, drum snare. I watch videos of him performing, and what's very, very interesting when you watch him perform is that there's no, there's not a lot of stuff on stage, not a lot of people on stage, not a lot of equipment. It's just really him, and him in a sense just being himself. And he gets that piano going, you know, plink, 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 you know, just again, stark. And then the drum snare, ch -ch 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 -ch. and who do I have? Save me. Heaven and hell, my friend, my friend. I won't fit in here. Everything must end. Hello from the dark side end. Does anybody here want to be my friend and want it all to end? When is it going to end? Voices in my head tell me I'm going to end up dead. Save me before I fall. I don't want to be alone. Before I fall, I don't want to be alone. That is the teenager's anthem. I don't want to be alone because I'm scared, I'm nervous, I'm afraid. Alone, I'm scared, I'm terrified. And by empathizing on one, on one instrument, he's able to keep it going because 
You're not hearing multiple instruments to distract you from the lyrics. It's that one instrument, boom, 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 da, 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 that gets you focused to listen to the message. One listener said that this song sounds like Pink Floyd or Roger Waters or Kurt Cobain. I had to agree. You know, if I didn't know who this guy was, I didn't know his age, and even looking at his ethnicity, the way he sings it, it's almost like classic rock. Pink Floyd, Roger Waters, Kurt Cobain, of course, is a different generation, but Pink Floyd, you know what? I had to agree. Next one, Dead Inside, it's uh, called Interlude. Confused and scared, unsure about himself. Again, the picture across the logs. Very halting. Music just stops. It breaks. It breaks normal convention. Music just, a lot of times when he's playing music, there's no like, like you know, da, 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 or ba, 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 just stops. It's almost like he's talking about his life with depression, anxiety, OCD, PTSD. It's not like, it doesn't like come to an end or a crescendo or a final chorus. It just stops. And often when, you, when you're feeling unhappy about yourself, that's how life tends to come along sometimes. You just feel like, I'm just, I'm, I'm blown out. Stuck in my head of mine. Love is dead. Let me be here. Was he feeling on you with his hands at night? Seeing the vivid pictures left me in tears. Where was I when he was feeling on you with his hands? You know, lost love. Infidelity. Now, she's not, she doesn't love me. I'm under the assumption love is dead. Where was I? When he was feeling on you with his hands, I'm under the assumption love is dead. Seeing the vivid pictures in my head. He is putting himself totally out there. Underline, underline. And you feel his sadness and pain on this song. I am dead inside thinking another man is touching you when I wanted to be your man. And the comments... Bam, 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 bam. As my hand goes lower, believe me, that was big. That was everywhere. That's all people were talking about, the relationship and the relatability of that song to themselves. Having your love, the love of your life, be with somebody else. Whether it's a, your woman or your man, and you just lay there and you feel helpless, hopeless, and crushed. So as an anthem for uh, people, for teenagers, it's perfect. Then there's the one called F Love. Same background again, the pictures plus the comments, you know, from the logs. And they want you to focus on the lyrics and hear the message. And the beat over and over keeps you hooked. That's because that's, that's, that's what the whole song is. It's two from his friend of his called Trippy Red, who goes, and it's the same one, one and three. There's three, there's three paragraphs. Baby, I need you in my life, in my life. Please, baby, don't go switching sides, switching sides. I swear this is where you reside, you reside. Don't go switching sides. Boom. And then he plays it again, the third one. And in the middle, I'm nauseous, I'm dying, she ripped my heart right out, can't find her, someone to. My eyes are all cried out, lost it. Gunfire inside my head, I lost it right, gunfire inside my head. Talking again about being unhappy, true love being denied, not feeling good about himself. Then we have, again, the song called Carry On. This is almost a falsetto of how that song begins. How did you get it from Shiloh Dynasty? How did you get him drunk and confused? I tried to be patient with you, yeah. High up, you're falling back down. It's almost a falsetto how the song is started, and then strip bare, only a guitar. And when X is talking, he goes like this. Trapped in the concept, falsely accused, misused and misled. I hope you rest in peace. Now the fact that I'm alone is comforting. I can't seem to shake this, this feeling in my heart. Cold shoulder, heartbroken, misspoken. I'm cut open. The fingers in all my stand wounds. And if she could, she'd probably dance on my grave inside my head. I see your face. I effing hate that I love you still. Yeah, I get it. Slow chorus, languid, almost liquid-like. Leaving it all out there. And then the chorus again from Shallow Dynasty. How did you get here? I'm drunk and confused. Try to be patient with you. High up, you're falling back down. Again, I got where they were coming from and trying to make this happen. Next, Orlando. Piano played very slowly. It's almost not the music. It's the words. I am in constant pain. Pain in my heart just won't end. The words I find just don't seem to compare. Wait until my death in the end. Alone, I'm going to seek out the end to begin. 
No one wants death. No one wants life to end. I'm the only one stressed. Only one tired of having fake friends. Uh, teenager anthem. No one's real to me. I interviewed a guy today. He said, I had friends. I said, what kind of friends? Oh, drug friends. What kind of friends are those? When you have drugs, they're your friends. When you don't have drugs, they're not your friends. You know, falseness. I don't have anybody really truly close to me that makes me feel good about myself and who I am. What's a real friend? I'm waiting on death with a smile on my face. Waste of, this is the end. Waste of tears, years and months. Face my fears. Looking for what I have. Hurt me, break my heart. Worthless, can't keep love at all. At all. Boom. The song just ends. Last song. Again, same intro. The pictures. Polaroid, Polaroid, Polaroid. The logs in the back. The news. This is the end. Unhappy. It's called Ayala. Piano intro. And ooh la la, she's told me the things love can't forget. Oh, it hurts now. Made a list of my regrets. You were the first love. Oh, it hurts. I can't forget how it hurts now. Oh, make a list of my regrets. And the piano ends. And that's the album. And the whole album really clocks in a second over 22 minutes. Okay, what do we learn from this album, which is just a completely different album from what I know about rap and what old time rappers are dealing with now. Okay? Rap music is evolving. What was the genre once is changing. Crossover is becoming the norm. I mean, to hear Kid Cudi talk about his influences, we're not like traditional rappers. And people today are picking up rap and they're just applying it to themselves on the way that they want to. So emo, indie, different, very, very different. And the concept of um, lo-fi, aesthetic, you know, sparse, coarse, not refined, but that's becoming the norm. And as kids today are growing up in a more multicultural world, it makes sense that like restaurants and foods have become so more international and people steal from one of those cultures that make their own food. It makes a sense to do that in music. I find myself listening to more diverse music than ever before, and I'm ancient. But people today have become more comfortable with reaching out. So as often as the concept of being like, you know, misunderstood, like, this isn't rap. Well, you don't get it, you're too old to get it, but no, it's, there's a place for everybody. But what's happening is, he's a, he's a kid. He's only 19. So he's changing his whole perspective on how he's looking at music himself. So here's another thing also. The openness to talk about one's issues to be bold or expose the pain and uncertainty is becoming normal now. The days of keeping things to yourself about mental illness, particularly depression, PTSD, physical and sexual abuse, drug and alcohol abuse, OCD, people are like, why am I hiding it? Who, who am I pretending to? Why? Why am I doing this? So you look at it from a sense of Kendrick, Kid Cudi, and now X or Triple X. Each one is opening himself up more and more. People are taking notice of feeling as though they have a voice from the singer as though they are relatable to them and their issues. That's very powerful. Because usually, you know, songs in the past about rap, rock and roll, emo, indie, were like, you know, like, you know, songs about, you know, it, it wasn't personalized. But now for the first time, people are putting labels on themselves and saying, I'm not talking about my best friend's girl who was suicidal. I'm the one that's suicidal. I'm the one that's depressed. I didn't grow up in a depressed house. I was the depressed guy in the house. I tried to kill myself. It used to be songs would be like, you know, about the other person, the other individual. Now, look at the source, baby. When I'm singing it, because I've lived it. I've been in the detention center. I've been suicidal. I've been depressed. Gee, that sounds like Kendrick Lamar, Kid Cudi, and Triple X. They're not hiding anymore. This is who I am. Either you accept me on this journey and we go on this together, or you don't. And this it's a lack, it's like a lack of lack of pretension when you're hearing this kind of music. And more and more people are feeling like this guy is talking about me, about me, about me. Now, there's an article I just saw to see today from a Jewish online newspaper. One shrouded in silence, young Jews are demanding openness about mental health disorders. Shocking. 
spurned by a recent wave of death called by opiate overdoses. Millennials are calling for less stigma and more hands-on approaches to address depression, suicide, and PTSD. Where I came from 20, 30 years ago, if you were sexually molested, physically abused, if you had drug or alcohol problems, someone committed suicide, you were OCD, you were filled with anxiety, how, did, how was it handled? I'll tell you, like this. It didn't exist. It didn't exist. And in a sense, these three guys, Kendrick, Cuddy, and Triple X, are doing for the African Americans what for years no one wants to talk about. No, there's no depression. That's a white person's thing. We're fine. We're fine. I'm a clinical social worker. I'm going into your house. Things are not fine. Trust me, things are not fine at all. You know, you put on 200 pounds, you're popping every junk food you can stuff in your mouth, you're not sleeping, you're, you're, you're doing things repetitively, you're popping pill after pill, you're smoking tons of weed to calm down. No, I'm fine. I don't have, a, I don't have an issue. Suicide after suicide? No, 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 no. Nothing to deal with it. I live in, I live in a gang-infested neighborhood, gunshots every night. You just get used to it. You don't. But that was the myth. That was the myth. That was the myth. And these guys are now saying, this is how I grew up. This is how I live. I'm not pretending anymore. Why? What did it do for me to make my whole family cuckoo and wacko? Because everyone suppressed. And for the first time, even Orthodox Jews, the smallest segment of Jews in America, they're now saying, who are we kidding? We have a problem. Here, they struggle with depression, OCD, PTSD, eating disorders, suicide attempts. They come from all walks of Jewish life. Some are secular, meaning they're modern, traditional, and much more observant. Others are broken with their orthodox past. That's the most religious section of Judaism. But what do they come for? As a group, to talk about what's bothering them and their issues. And this one guy said, Refuat Hanefesh. Hanefesh is the soul. Refu is like, you know, to heal the soul. Refua, you know, you know, get better. Founder and President Dr. Ariel Mintz said the support room, which he helped found, has helped more than 2,000 people since the group's launch a year ago. And he's a psychiatrist completing a medical fellowship in Minneapolis. And what did he say? The younger generation's comfort level on social media. We see a generation that lives on social media, so we're relating to people on social media. And this other rabbi gave a talk, not a rabbi, the other guy was a doctor, I'm sorry. This guy gave a talk. He has an own organization, Rabbi Gluck. He gave a talk on about sexual abuse and its implications for mental health. 1,400 people showed up and more than 15,000. See, here's the thing. 1,400 came, 15,000 watched on live stream. Boom. Sexual abuse in the Orthodox community, notoriously never talked about. This guy's saying if you don't talk about it, you're going to have more and more problems with your kids as they get older. And A, they don't want to be Jewish anymore. And B, they have mental health problems like killing themselves, drug and alcohol abuse, OCD, anxiety disorders, can't sleep, can't stay married. He's, he's picking up on it. Gambling disorders, inappropriate sexual encounters, all the good stuff that's happening, plus suicides. And he goes, we're at the beginning of an avalanche of change. So here, people are realizing you can't pretend anymore. And then what did he come out with? I want to go back to the misunderstood part about uh, X Triple X. He released an album, no, 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 I'm sorry, a song, Look at Me, and he went, this released it from jail. And the comments on it was, was in the, when you're watching the video, there's a point, there's two little kids, and he pulls down like a noose, and he puts a noose on one of the kids' necks. They look about to be like four or five years old. Next thing you see is this. And the kid is being hung up. And the comments were, what the heck is this? This is insane. This is crazy. Who puts this kind of stuff out? Now, the song went in a lot of different directions, blah, blah, blah. But he's trying to show the whole point of the craziness of hatred and self-hatred and the anger of racism on both sides. But he's trying to show that when we don't, you know, don't get things out in the open, don't talk, and this is my take on my interpretation of what he's doing, you're killing yourself. You're literally putting a noose around your neck. And I think that's what he's trying to do in terms of 
the shock of like seeing this actually take place. Now, I'm old, no argument. I'm trying to understand where this sense of like the comments are coming from. I can relate to him. I've been through this. I get it. And I saw that with Kendrick Lamar. I really saw that with Kid Cudi. And I really see this with this guy X. Like, I know where he's coming from. I've been there. I've been sad. I've been depressed. I've been unhappy. And I'm trying to go back in my lifetime. Where did I see a sense of we're a family. We're a family not by being cool. We're a family by not being cool, by being on the outside. Because most of music is about, you know, being the popular cheerleader, being the football captain, being popular, being pretty, being smart, being good looking, going on to a great college or a great job, great future. That's all what music is about to bring you together. What proved to me signified a change in that about 20, 25 years ago was a group called ICP, Insane Clown Posse. Now, I am familiar with their music. I can't say I'm a fan, but I know their music. And I was talking to someone, and he said when he was working in a psychiatric hospital with children and adolescents years ago, no matter what music was offered to the kids, what music did they want to hear? They wanted to hear their ICP. I'm a juggalo. And to this day, I see tattoos on people. I see Hatchet Man. I see the clown. I see ICP. It's fanatical. That you, you have such a feeling of emotional rush to a group that songs could not be played on the radio. Never got commercial airplay because it was found to be repulsive. That people will actually tattoo themselves to be part of the family. What is a juggalo? You're down with the clown, and you're down for life. Once you're one of us, you're always in. You're part of the family. And ICP, Hatchet Man, how many tattoos have I seen? They even have a three-day festival every year, every summer in Detroit, in Island off Detroit, to get 10,000 people to show up for three days, all day juggalo. That's it. And when you talk to the people and you, and you notice their tattoo of Hatchet Man, ICP, the clown, they look at you like this. Like, we get it. You get what I am, why I want to be this, because I am different. You know what? I don't care if I'm different. I know I'm different, but my juggalo fam, my family, my family loves me. And one of their songs is called Suicide Hotline. What are the comments? Lonely, alone, depression, nothing to look forward to. No future, no home. Comments, either you love them or you hate them, but it's a feeling of belonging. I can relate. And there are people my age that still consider themselves to be jugglers. Amazing. They have crossed genres and decades because of the feeling of you're different, you don't like people, people don't like you, they see you as scary, not in the mainstream culture. You know what? There's a place for you in our family. And what he did, he just created that whole thing all over again. We come from a broken family. It's a little different than ICP, but we come from a broken family. You don't have a father. Your mom's not really in your life. You're being raised by your grandmother. All you know is psych hospitals, juvenile detention centers, foster homes, going to court. I've been there. I know your world because I've lived it. That's the difference. That's what I find interesting. You don't have consistency in your life, no one to love you. I had someone say to me two weeks ago, man, I wish I would have had a father that was concerned about me, that would have talked to me the way you talked to me. But my father was too busy getting arrested. My father was too busy not being a father. This came from a girl. Didn't have a father. So you know what? I screwed up my life, and I can't go back. Because what I've screwed up is so bad, you can't take, you know, an eraser. My mistakes are going to haunt me for the rest of my life. 
I do agree. Who are you? And that's what I got from that. Now, I'm going to close with this. The problem with mental health is this. You deal with problems. Anyone that works in the field are dealing with people that have a problem with often self-control, making good decisions, and thinking things through logically. They didn't have any training. It wasn't given to them. And they have to do things on their own. And when you don't have um, that focus, that guideline, that post to work from, you make mistakes. And also sometimes you make terrible mistakes and terrible decisions. I get it. The album is raw and powerful. But if he's found guilty, there's going to be consequences and a price and very likely a sentence to pay. And when you don't have a parental influence, and what seems likely is a father that was not involved with him, this is what you wind up with. And I see this on a daily basis in my line of work. You didn't just get to be this delightful person on your own. You got support and help when no one's supporting and helping you. It's like trying to build a house without knowing how to build a house. How to put a foundation down, how to put down the wood and the steel and the aluminum. You don't know. You, you make a mess of it. You want to fix a car. Okay, go fix a carburetor. Oh, I'll read a video. I'll watch a video. I'll read a book. You know what you do? You screw up the whole car because you don't know what you're doing. You don't have that guidance to test you and show you what's expected. And you don't really understand how to grow up to become a functioning man and woman. That's the problem. So why do we make these videos for? Get help. If you're confused, if you're uncertain, get help. Talk to someone. Watch a video. That's becoming the norm anyway. Seek out support. Don't do it alone because you're going to make disastrous decisions you'll regret for the rest of your life. Drugs and alcohol aren't going to save you. I mean, we could talk about that for a million years. It's all the same conclusion. You know, doing things that are self-destructive for you on an intimate level will haunt you for the rest of your life. Your self-worth will go in, into the toilet. Talk to people when you're struggling, when you're hurting, when you're feeling glum. These are orthodox shoes. They kind of figured it out already. What's the purpose? I grew up in a house where, and what do we do? Nothing happened. Thank God today there are organizations like this to say, you know what? We need to talk about it. Because we didn't talk about it, people grew up dysfunctional, and no one knows why. Now we know why. Suicide, depression, PTSD, anxiety, drug and alcohol abuse, physical and sexual abuse, which for years, see, 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 under the table. Get the help you need. We are going to be releasing something fairly soon about fathers. What to look for in a father, what kind of father you should be. Uh, what, why it's important to have a good father in your life. We are going to get into that. We're going to talk about that. Give us a little bit more time. Things will be on our control. Believe me, if we could have had it out there, we will. We are going to be going into new genres. I'm going to be trying to learn how to do things quicker in the sense of doing more stuff for via my car. Uh, we want to do a webinar. I uh, we want to do a live chat, uh, bring some people in, just kind of expand what we're doing. We're getting a lot of nice feedback, a lot of great comments. We appreciate it. We want to take it to the next level. So we're going to reach out to you, our fans, and go from there. So be patient, be patient, be patient. What I want from people who are watching this video today, comment on stability. What does it mean to have stability in your life? Did you have a friend that you looked up to? Did you have a coach, a parent? Did you have someone that, you, that was a rock? Maybe even a boss. I don't care. But somebody that taught you right from wrong and made you hopefully the functional man and woman you have been. You write in, I write back to you. People who have done that before have noticed I get back to people. I'm not saying the same day, but I will get back. If you leave me a comment about what you look for, what are you looking for, what do you want to look for, I will dialogue with you. That's my way of saying, hey, I support everybody that watches the video, that takes the time to leave comments. I appreciate it. Open yourself up. 
I'll open myself up. Let's take this journey together. I want to see people healthy and happy and functional. That's the goal of all these videos, to give you the confidence that something dreadful is about to happen or has happened. You watch one and you say, Bruce gave me the confidence to make decisions on my own because he feels I have what it takes. Everybody, again, thank you for watching. Please keep on watching. And what we love more than anything is your comments, comments, comments. All the best. Take care. Peace.